probably about a five foot gill net or five foot hoop net. Excuse me. This one has got, has got spring steel surrounded by uh, PolyPro. They run it through the middle of PolyPro rope, and I, I'm pretty sure the reason they're doing that, and it makes a lot of sense, is the um, these meshes here. You know, that's the first thing to wear out on a, on a hoop on a hoop net. And you put that plastic stuff there, and it slides this way and that. It's going to take a lot of stress off of those off of those knots. And that, you know, you're dragging this hoop net across rocks and it'll wear them out. So this is a, a, a kind of a nice little invention. I've never seen that before. Uh, the, uh, it's, all these hoop nets you notice are, are at least two throats and, they're, and uh, most of them, are the, they'll have the back throat is fingered. Uh, now, so if you look at this is what you call, I don't know if I can reach through there, but if you can see the inner net there and the way it's hung, that's called a fingered throat. And uh, you know, the uh, if you can go and that there is not a fingered throat. Take a look at that other one up there, and uh, you can buy hoop nets at off the shelf. A lot of buyers just buy hoop nets, not knowing what the heck they're talking about, and they will get nets with a single throat, and they won't even be fingered. There's no point in fishing a hoop net with a single throat that's not fingered, and. If, if really you're gonna, you're gonna much really rather have at least two throats in there and the back one should be fingered because they have a lot more trouble figuring out how to get out of this finger throat than they do out of that, out of just a round throat or they call that a square throat sometimes. Um, the, uh, and here's a, and again, you see that same strategy in this, in this one, this is a, older style, it's the same as this one, except for that, that one has uh, the, the PolyPro netting stretched around the spring steel. Uh, and you look at the internet, you'll see that the inside is fingered and, that, and you've got a square throat in the front. The, uh, and if you buy the, the cheapest hoop nets off of, uh, off of the uh, you know, a, a commercial site, and a lot of biologists do, They'll have one throat in a square, and that's, you're wasting your time. You shouldn't even try to catch anything in that, much less a carp. So, the, uh, and you look at this one, it's got a really small inner throat. Now the advantage, of, and it's got a really big, uh, that throat is star-shaped, that their square throat in this one is actually star-shaped. And, uh, and it's got a, a, uh, a much, much smaller hole going there. And the, the thing is, you get the fish past the first throat, they've got to figure out how to get out. It's pretty easy to figure out how to get back out that way, but you're giving them uh, you know, a throat to go through this direction. That throat's pretty small, but if, if that works, they're not gonna have a, it's gonna be really hard for them to find their way back out again you know, in, this, in a net that size. They're not gonna find that central hole. So I, I, I really like this net, but uh, I, I think your really large fish would have trouble negotiating that, uh, that, that particular fingered throat. And this is a, a a hoop net with a lead. This is the you know, these are it's got mass massive floats on this thing, um, and it's uh, these are floats. They look like lead, but they're floats. By the way, you wouldn't know, you don't need floats and lead that big for anything, and that would be a terrible thing to have. Um, the uh, if if you look at this net over here, it's got the this looks like a a gill net, but it's not really set up to be a gill net, right? It's just a lead. It's a cheap net to block fish. It's a block net. It's what it is, and it's tied to the center of that uh, of that hoop net. And the idea is, and you will run this. If you run it in the current, that it would go that far end would be up would be um, upstream. This will be the the fish are going to be moving upstream in the current, and if they're moving sideways in the current, they're going to hit this block net and they're gonna to have to go one of two directions. And so assuming they go upstream, which is the more common way the fish are gonna be running, they're gonna be funneled into that throat. Ronnie says he puts wings on, on his uh, hoops instead of leads, and uh, in which case the, the, a wing is kind of sewed to the outside edge, and it would go, you know, it would be a net like this that's as tall as the top to the bottom, but sewed to the outside edges and spread out in, in, in a V-shape. And so, you know, when uh, the fish come up river, they're going to hit that V and be funneled into the mouth of this throat. Uh, so, and you see, there's lots of different sizes of, of these uh, uh, hoop nets. So these are all mostly designed for the hoop nets are designed for fishing in current. Um, gill nets you can fish in current, but 
not very much because eventually you're gonna, if there's any kind of debris at all, you're gonna lose them and also they, they'll have a tendency to get the shift off and, and start uh, drifting down the river. So, you know, we don't really run hoop nets, or excuse me, gill nets in current at all. These are, these are current applications, all these hoop nets.